Good morning. It is Tuesday, July 23rd, and this is The Drill. Thank you very much, and my name is Ronald T. Hardgrove. My podcast is about demonstrating how to beat the left each and every day and to uh, defeat the left uh, not only politically but culturally and philosophically as well. My podcast is made possible by Spreaker.com. It can be heard on iTunes, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. My email address is storytimes at hotmail.com. I'm on Twitter at Ronald Hardgrove and on Facebook at The Drill. So I started my socio-political odyssey as a conservative Republican. I was taught by the left that I was a conservative because of where I stood on the issues, which sounded reasonable, but whenever I engaged a liberal in debate, I couldn't win. I soon figured out that the issues were in reality a trap. The issues were created by the left for the left. So there, is there any way for a conservative to win? Yes, by redefining what it means to be a conservative. By becoming a true conservative, I will not only win, I will never lose. And the purpose of my podcast is to demonstrate how to defeat the left each and every day. So instead of defining conservative the way that the left wants conservatives to define it, by the issues, by imagination, conservatives should define the word conservative the right way, the realistic way, the conservative way by reality, because nothing is more powerful than reality, and the reality is that the presumption is always made for the status quo. The case for change must be obvious, and this puts the burden of proof on the left and means that I can win and win all the time. Voting. There's uh, two parts to politics, voting and debate. So how is a conservative, a true conservative, supposed to vote? Burden of proof is fine when involved in a debate, but it's another thing when it comes time to get in the voting booth. What then? What is it that a true conservative stands for, if anything? Are there conservative issues? Yes. The first and most important issue is conflict of interest. A true conservative should always vote against conflicts of interest. Conflict of interest is the essence of corruption. What are examples of conflict of interest and corruption? Public employee unions lawyers regulating lawyers, and doctors regulating doctors. So how do I vote the status quo? Simple. What is the ultimate status quo politically? The U.S. Constitution. What is the uh, essence of the U.S. Constitution? Two things. Government neutrality and the rights of the individual. So the true conservative should always vote for a candidate or issue that promotes government neutrality and the God-given rights of the individual. This means that the government, any government, is not allowed to act but must be moved. Activism by the government, any government, whether it's federal, state, or local, necessarily violates the God-given rights of the individual. For instance, if the government decides that it must prevent gun violence or pollution, it necessarily violates the First and Second Amendments of the Constitution. The second thing is individuality. The true conservative should always vote for the candidate or issue that stands for the rights of the individual and not the rights, quote-unquote, of groups. And the reason is uh, that uh, there is no such thing, first of all, as group rights. There are the rights of the individual that the individual may loan to uh, the group, but it is still the individual that has the rights. The second uh, reason for this is that support for one group necessitates opposition to another. For instance, you cannot be pro-women's rights without being anti-men's rights. And uh, the left is always looking to empower women and to do so at the expense of men. To do so sexually, the pill and abortion, economically, working outside the home, and legally through no-fault divorce. So the idea is then to make women independent of men. Uh, All of that has, all those efforts have failed and failed miserably, but that's a for another time. So uh, first deciding what the issues are and second deciding where a candidate starts on the, stands on the issues is where false conservatives go wrong. So to win, a true conservative must be certain because now uh, we're de- also dealing now with debate. 
First, we're dealing with voting, now debate. And in order to win a debate, you're going to have to be certain. Certain of reality, certain of knowledge, certain of morality, and universality. Also, if you want to win every argument with the left, the secret is understanding that the left is always bluffing. Being certain that the left is always bluffing. The left always pretends to have information that it does not have. So a true conservative must begin all debates by making the presumption for the status quo. No true conservative ever tries to prove a negative, prove that they're not a racist, try to prove that they're not a misogynist or whatever it is that the, uh, the left is calling them at that particular time. You don't do that. No true conservative ever tries to debate the news, but instead debates individuals. You'll find a lot of pundits, particularly Rush Limbaugh, that like to read a, an article and then debate the person that wrote the article without actually having that person in the room or on the phone to conduct the debate with. It's ridiculous and counterproductive. A true conservative always ignores arbitrary claims and questions. And the way you know whether it's arbitrary or not, number one, if the left is coming out of a lefty's mouth 99.9% .9 of the time, it's arbitrary. They don't deal in evidence and facts and proof. Uh, if there's evidence, if there's uh, facts, if there's proof, then you're dealing with a claim uh, that you can deal with. For instance, if somebody uh, just says, hey, you know, you're a racist and leaves it at that, they have provided no evidence, no proof, you've got to ignore it. If somebody says, you're a racist, and I know that because I've seen a picture of you at a KKK rally. Now you have something. He's producing some evidence, not necessarily proof, because who knows, maybe you were on a journalistic assignment, a news assignment, and you attended that rally um, uh, on assignment. So uh, you can't say that picture itself is proof of anything, but it is, at least they're offering evidence, and you can attack that evidence. You can find out when that picture was taken, where that picture was taken, and you can produce positive proof that you were in a different location at the time this picture was taken, so it couldn't possibly be you. That's the difference uh, between um, an arbitrary and a non-arbitrary claim. Um, a false conservatives give power away. They do so by psychologically... Um, by allowing themselves to be psychologically manipulated. Manipulated to honor arbitrary claims and questions and manipulated into proving negatives. Culture. Um, judge, judge, judge. Judgment is an inherent, escapable, inescapable part of life. The biggest mistake that right-wing talk show hosts make is failing to judge. In failing to judge, they consistently miss opportunities to promote conservatism. And you need to do that. If you expect uh, people to respect your political opinions, you need to promote them. You need to come out and say, my opinions or my political ideas and opinions are better than the political ideas and opinions of my opponent. That's what I mean by judging. I am better than they are. We are better than they are. So uh, one of the classic mistakes that the right makes is in when the left says something, let's say, uh, that's um, uh, racist. So Joe Biden, Joe Biden, a former vice president, who at one point in his career said, well, you can't go to uh, particular stores in uh, his state without having a slight Indian accent. Um, and referred to uh, uh, Barack Obama, described him as being a viable candidate because he was clean and articulate and used some other words. And the, you'll hear Rush Limbaugh say, what if we said that? What if a Republican said that? Well, the news media would go bananas. They would never have a field day with it. They would accuse us of racism. But in the case of Joe Biden, since he's one of their own, the, he gets away with it. So... Uh, the problem with this is that it makes him sound jealous. It makes Rush Limbaugh sound as though he's saying, I wish I could be as racist as Joe Biden. I wish I had uh, the media on my side so I could make uh, stupid racist comments like Joe uh, Biden does. 
So anybody listening, a, a young person listening and thinking about where they want to put their political futures and fortunes is going to say a pox on both your houses. There's a, a statistics that show the young people have a tendency to uh, be either independent, register independent, or decline to state. More and more, that there's a trend going in that direction. And I uh, put it that at the feet that I say the reason they're doing that is because people like Rush Limbaugh missed the opportunity uh, to come out and promote conservatism. In this case, what he should be saying is uh, Joe Biden made a, a racial slur. He made is actually a stereotype uh, that all people that own certain stores are uh, from India. And it's a uh, 7-Elevens, let's say. And uh, it's a stereotype. And stereotype is isn't necessarily racist in and of itself, but it uh, is part of being a racist. And Rush Limbaugh should have said, no Republican would ever make such a statement. No conservative would ever make such a statement because we are better than that. Okay, that's the statement he needs to make. We are better than than Joe Biden. Okay, now you're sending a message to that student, the one that's thinking about uh, where they want to put uh, invest their political time and energy, that the Republican Party is the place to be, that conservative is the way to go. You're promoting conservatism. So every time you get the opportunity to say, we're better than they are, you take it. You, don't, uh, you never go neutral. Concepts and abstractions. Versus storytelling and verbal picture painting. Conceptualizing and abstracting are modern and sophisticated. Storytelling and verbal picture painting are regressive. How many times have you asked a friend of yours uh, to explain something and he goes ahead and tells you a story? Takes him 10, 15 minutes to complete his story. And even when he's completed his story, you have no idea whether or not he's answered your question. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Storytelling and verbal picture painting. And uh, while storytelling and verbal picture painting may be vivid, they lack the accuracy and uh, the communicative power of concepts and abstractions. So real conservatives are conceptual, while false conservatives ape the left and resort to storytelling and verbal picture painting. Psychological manipulation, bullying, and intimidation. Defeating the left necessarily means defeating psychological manipulation, bullying, and intimidation. The tactics and techniques for psychological manipulation, bullying, and intimidation are, the the main one is gaslighting. And that's basically where they make you um, feel like you're crazy. Try to tell you that they didn't do or didn't say things you know they did or uh, say or do. Classic example, you're with Mr. and Ms. Lefty and you're saying, you know, my boss really made me mad today. What a jerk. He did this, he did that, he did the other thing. Your lefty friend says, well, maybe your boss is having a hard time. Maybe your boss has cancer. Maybe your boss is sick. Maybe your boss uh, didn't get a good, good night's sleep last night. Maybe he's an insomniac. Maybe he's a diabetic. What are they doing? They're making excuses For your boss, whom they don't know and have never met. They're friends with you, but they're uh, complete strangers with the boss. Why would they do that? So you ask them, why are you on my boss's side? And then they come back and say, I'm not. I'm not on their side. This is gaslighting. You know what you heard. They indeed defended your boss by making excuses for him. They didn't make any excuses for you. Did they? Did they say, well, maybe you're having a tough time with this because you didn't sleep well last night because you're uh, not feeling well, riddled with cancer, whatever the circumstances, whatever. They didn't bother to make excuses for you. Somebody they know and are supposed to be friends with, no. They made excuses for a complete stranger. And now they want to say, oh, no, I'm not on his side. Gaslighting. And uh, you can... Um, you don't continue with the conversation. You have to let them know. The way to defeat it is to let them know, I know what I heard, and until we're not going to continue with the conversation, 
until such time as you're prepared to admit that you're taking the boss's side and explain to me why it is you're taking the boss's side. And um, you ha- it has to be done. You can't allow that to slide because, again, they get away with doing you a psychological injury. So false conservatives, conservatives use counter-psychology to defeat the left. True conservatives use the intellect because the battle between right and left is very often the, the battle between psychology and uh, intellectuality. Sloganeering, the left attempts to, uh, attempts to dominate our culture through the use of slogans. False conservatives um, will uh, fail to appreciate subtle influence of slogans. The real conservative makes no such mistake. Also, the problem with um, slow, the use of slogans is, the, is that you, they can be easily defeated with a counter slogan. One of the slogans I've seen is, these are a list of the ones that I've seen, question everything. Why? And we ask the reason why because if we follow the diktat to question everything, we must start by questioning the diktat itself and ask why question everything. Uh, Question authority. Says who? Subvert the dominant paradigm. Screw you. Coexist. Go to hell. Um, well behaved well I'm not going to use that one that's not as good an example the earth does not belong to us us. we belong to the earth drop dead give back it's mine does it have to be that way does it have to change and uh, then there's a couple of there's a couple of others but I dealt with those yesterday so values values are universal True conservatives know that there are no right-wing or left-wing values. False conservatives erroneously ascribe values to the right or the left, and they talk about conservative values. There's no such thing. There's human values, those things that we uh, act to gain or keep. The malevolent universe premise, life's a bitch and then you die. That's what it sums up, and it's a very, very important part of the left and the left's outlook on life, because it explains their attitude towards the rich and why it is in our culture we have a tendency to raise people up and then tear them down. Okay, So the malevolent universe premise is uh, the basis, again, for... Uh, well, the malevolent universe premise, life's a bitch and then you die, is uh, summed up is that failure is to be expected. And those that are successful have either cheated, gotten lucky, or a combination of the two. And the the malevolent universe premise is the basis for hating all successful people, especially the rich. It's also given rise to the slogan, give back. Because the idea is you cheated to get here or you got lucky to get here. Either way, you you don't deserve what you've gotten, so you need to give back. False conservatives are taken in by, the, uh, by this premise, using it as an excuse to be counter, counter-cultural. The real conservative knows that the universe is benevolent, that the universe, the individual, and other human beings are knowable, that success, therefore, is to be expected, and that uh, people that are successful, including the rich, the very rich, are to be emulated and not immolated. The theories, skepticism, the contradiction that nothing can be known with certainty, determinism, a theory that denies free will, pragmatism, a theory that says all actions should be judged by their outcomes, in other words, the ends justify the means, hedonism, if it feels good, do it, reductionism, a procedure or theory that reduces complex data and phenomena to simple terms. Solipsism, the philosophical position that holds that your own existence is the only thing that is real or that can be known. It's also known as subjectivism. Uh, Collectivism, um, oh, I'm also listed, collectivism, which is fairly obvious. The idea that the individual is insignificant uh, except uh, in the individual's service to a collective. 
Skepticism is the basis for all environmental so-called science and essentially promotes superstition. Determinism is the basis for all preventative government programs, preventing pollution, preventing health problems, heart attack, obesity, diabetes, cancer, etc., preventing violence, preventing DUIs. Um, Subjectivism is the basis for all group rights, uh, women's rights, gay rights, black rights. Pragmatism is the rationalization for all criminal activity and is basically advocating that you act like a criminal, that you do whatever it do whatever it is that you think you can get away with. False conservatives ignorant of these philosophical theories and their potential power. The real conservative is constantly vigilant, ever on guard to identify and defeat these falsehoods. And I wanted to, um, oh, that the existence, your, your own existence, the only thing that is real or that can be known, solipsism or subjectivism. And it's important because how many times do you get stymied by somebody that, uh, let's say, on a racial issue, right? Um, uh, they might be uh, talking about, um, uh, what usually, the bottom line with this is that it's a way of saying that all men are an island. That's what solipsism is. I'm an island. You don't know me. You don't understand me. And there's no possible way you can. And I don't know or understand you which is BS, because if we didn't, we wouldn't be able to communicate with one another. But it's the basis for being able to say, I get to do whatever the hell I want to, and you have no basis on which to criticize me. Okay, Since we have nothing in common, we're all islands, you have no basis on which to criticize me. If, therefore, you criticize me anyway, the basis of your criticism must be suspect. It must be racism. It must be misogyny, etc. Okay, so when you get people that are immediately, when you criticize them, jump to a, well, you're just a racist, that's where this is coming from. And the way it, it teaches you, and you need to know this so you know, know how to defeat that. And you say, no, it's not racism. I have um, every uh, ability to criticize you because we're both human beings. I know you, I understand you. You can you can. Pretend all you want to that you're an island, but the fact of the matter is you're not. You're a human being, and all human beings have certain things in common. And on that basis, I can know you, and I can judge you, whether you like it or not. So, um, and a word about the left. In reality, the left has no authority, no power. They can't win. That's a good slogan or counter slogan for the for use on the left when you don't know what else to say. You have no authority, you have no power, you can't win. And just repeat it over and over again and, until you can uh, break free of their uh, of the conversation, get away from them, so to speak. And uh, that's another thing is you, you don't want to proselytize with the left. Don't go looking for lefties to try to convert them. If a lefty comes to you and is saying, I'm sick of being a lefty, talk to me about being a conservative, fine. But going out and looking to find lefties to convert is simply looking for trouble. You're going to end up with um, very hot arguments. Uh, Let's see. Uh, The only reason that they appear to win the left is that reactionaries give them their victories. Reactionaries, talk show hosts, in essence, aid and abet uh, the left. So the biggest mistake the so-called conservative talk show hosts make is failing to make the distinctions, judgmental distinctions between Republican and Democrat, conservative and liberal, capitalist and socialist. Republican conservative capitalist is better. Conservatives need to remind you, as a matter of fact, you might want to say best, because it's better than libertarianism, it's better than communitarianism, it's better than any other uh, sociopolitical force out there. And you want to remind people of that. I'm, you, you want to, that's another deal with the issue of, of uh, the issues. You're a Republican because of where you stand on the issues. No, I'm a Republican because being a Republican is the best. It's better than anything else out there. That's why I'm a Republican. So uh, being truly conservative is realistic, effective, and true. Anything else is idealistic, ineffective, 
and false. Or to put it more simply, being truly conservative is right and everything else is wrong. Okay, you want to be definitive. One of the, the best things that you can do to defeat a lefty is be definitive and make value judgments. Every time you claim that something is better uh, or best, every time you claim that something is wrong or stupid, you win. The second biggest mistake that so-called conservative talk show hosts make is confusing reactionary with conservative. Being reactionary is an anti-conceptual mentality that involves reacting to arbitrary claims and aping the left. Arbitrary claims are those claims that lack evidence or proof. Aping the left means copying their communication style, which means making predictions and using anti-concepts. Making predictions deprives conservatives of value by substituting forecasting for moralizing. Moralizing involves judgment. Judgment is used to decide, ultimately, what is real and what is imaginary. We use judgment instead of prediction because we need to answer the question, what should I do? Not, what is going to happen? Using anti-concepts aids the left in obliterating legitimate concepts, such as property and conflict of interest. And um, they use... Uh, The environment is one of the anti-concepts that the left uses to try to obliterate the concept of property. Also, they use migrant instead of immigrant or emigrant as a way, again, of denying property because migrant assumes that there are no borders. And borders are what? A delineation of property. The United States of America belongs to the citizens of the United States. And that's why we have a boundary. And so to simply say mig- migrant instead of immigrant or emigrant denies property, the ultimate property, our country. So um, let's see. Uh, the third biggest mistake pundits make is in confusing traditionalism with conservatism. Traditionalism demands a slavish devotion to the status quo. Uh, you're going to maintain the status quo at all costs. No changes ever for any reason. And um, it's not, which is unrealistic. It's another way of subordinating reality to politics. The socialist tells himself only we could get rid of the status quo, we'd be all set. The traditionalist tells himself if only we could get rid of change, we'd be all set. If it is true that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, then conservatives do more to honor the left than to defeat it. So uh, about this time, I'm going to go ahead and take a little break. Back in a minute. Thank you very much, and uh, welcome back. And who are the true conservatives? They are the people that understand that conservatism is not just political but cultural as well. They are patriotic people who use common sense, they make judgments instead of predictions, speak clearly and definitively, and are not afraid to say no. They are open-minded, asking why rather than why not. They are consistent, credible, and influential, not ashamed of their existence, unafraid to learn or correct their mistakes, They are normal Americans. And that brings me to the conclusion of another episode of The Drill. And until next time, thank you very much for listening and have a great day.